This is Grade 11 Economics Revision Lesson provided by the Ministry of Education. In the previous lesson, we saw the theory of consumer behavior, more specifically the cardinal and the ordinal utility theories. Today, we are going to revise Unit 4, which is about theory of production and cost. That means we are going to see three major lessons or theories under this unit called theory of production, theory of cost, and the link between production and cost. Let's start with theory of production. Production is the process of converting inputs into outputs. It is the process of converting economic resources into more useful forms. Suppose the farmer produces the output weights by employing farm inputs such as land, oxen, fertilizer, seed, and labor. From this example, these land, labor, oxen, fertilizers, and the likes are considered as an input, but the output is the weight. Now, let's see some of the terms used to describe the theory of production. First, output is the final goods and service, which is the outcome of the production process. In our example, if the farmer produces weights using the inputs land, labor, capital, and the likes, the output is the weights. But the inputs are those resources which can be used for the production of the outputs. In our example, if the farmer employs land, labor, fertilizer, and seed to produce the output weight, hence these resources, land, labor, and fertilizer are considered as inputs. These inputs are further categorized into two called fixed input and variable inputs. Fixed inputs are those inputs whose quantities do not vary at the level of output vary. That means even though there is an increase in the level of output, if there is no change in the inputs used in production, such input is categorized under fixed input. For example, land and building are usually considered as fixed inputs. But the variable inputs are those inputs that directly varies with the level of output. That means inputs that increases at the level of output increases and inputs that decreases at the level of output decreases are called variable inputs. Most of the time, labor is considered as a variable input. Now, let's illustrate these, these terms using the following farm model. Under the production function with one variable input, here the farmer produces weights and this is land oxen. The farmer produces weights using this two hectares of land. So the total product of two land is zero here and the total product of two hectares of land is five. Again, the farmer also produces 11 quintal from two hectare of land. The farmer again produces 18 quintal from two hectares of land, 24 quintal from two hectares of land, 27 quintal from two hectares of land, 27 quintals from two hectares of land, and 25 quintals of weight from two hectares of land. In this case, even though there is a change in the output produced, there is no change in the inputs employed. Hence, land is considered as fixed input. But when we see the amount of labor employed, the total product of zero labor is zero, and one labor is five quintal, two labor is 11, three labor is 18, four labor is 24, five labor is 27, six labor is 27, and the total product of seven labor is 20. Five. Hence, with the change in the amount of labor employed, there is a change in the total product. So, labor directly varies as the level of output varies. Hence, we can consider labor as the variable input. 
Now, let's come back to some of the terms used to describe production. There are two production periods called short run and long run. Short run is a production period in which the quantity of at least one of the input system production remains fixed. That means the firm employs at least one fixed input. But in the long run, all the input system production are variable. Remember here, the time horizon is not used to distinguish whether the production period is short run or long run. A production that lasts for 100 years might be in the short run or a production that lasts only for three months might enter into the long run. Because if all the inputs used in production are variable, then the production is said to be in the long run. But if at least the quantity of one of the inputs used remain fixed, then, then it is considered as short run. Production function shows the maximum possible output that can be produced from a given combination of inputs. It also describes the technical relationships between the various amounts of inputs used in production and the resulting output. So the output is a function of the inputs, land, labor, fertilizer, seeds, and the likes. Now, under the theory of production, we are going to see different production functions called production function with one variable input, production function with two variable inputs, and returns to scale. Let's start with the production function with one variable input. Assume that the farmer employs a fixed amount of fertilizer, seeds, and the likes. Again, the farmer produces weights on two hectares using two oxen. So from this farm model, we can see that the farmer employs only one variable input, which is labor. So by increasing the amount of labor employed and by decreasing the amount of labor employed, the farmer can increase his output, the amount of weight produced. This is the model. The farmer produces the output weights on two hectares of land using two oxen. So the amount of land and oxen is not changing whether the farmer produces more of the weight and less of the weight. Hence, oxen and land are fixed inputs. But the farmer increases or decreases the amount of weight production by increasing and decreasing the amount of labor employed. Hence, labor is considered as the variable input. Now, let's see the average product of the variable input labor and the marginal product of the variable input labor. Mathematically, the average product of the variable input labor is calculated by dividing the total product for the amount of the variable input labor employed. So the amount of total product from zero unit is zero. This means without employment of the variable input, there is no output. Even though we do have the land, oxen, fertilizer, and seed, without labor, we cannot produce any amount of weight. So in the short run, the total product of zero units of a commodity is always zero. And the total product of one labor is five quintal. That means it is calculated by dividing five for one. This indicates that the very product of one variable input labor, one labor is five quintal. This indicate that one labor is producing five quintal on average. When we see the second one, the average product of one, two labor is 11 quintal. That means it is calculated by dividing 11 for two, and then it will give us 5.5. And this tells us if two farmers produces 11 quintal, then one farmer is producing 5.5 quintal on average. Similarly, if three labors produce 18 quintal, then the average product of one labor is six. And if four labor produces 24 quintal, 
then one labor produces six quintal on average and if five labors produce 27 quintal then one labor produces 5.4 quintal on average and if six labor produces 27 quintal then one labor produces 4.5 quintal on average and finally if seven labor produces 25 quintal then one labor produces 3.58 quintal on average this is the way of calculating the average product of the variable input labor now let's see the marginal product marginal product is the additional output produced from additional implement of the variable input labor mathematically the marginal product of the variable input labor is calculated by dividing the change in the total product divided by the change in the variable input labor for example if zero labor produces zero quintal and if we get five quintal from one labor then the additional output produced from additional implement of the variable input labor is five mathematically the marginal product is calculated by dividing change in tp which is tp final minus tp initial divided by tp, the variable input labor final minus the variable input labor initial which is change in labor so let's take this zero as labor initial and this one as labor final let's take this zero as tp initial and this five as tp final and then when we substitute this information on this formula then the value of tp final is 5 minus tp initial is 0 divided by the the value of labor final is 1 minus labor initial is 0 this is 5 over 1 which is which is 5 so this indicates that as we increase production as we increase the employment of the variable input labor from 0 to 1 if the total product increase from 0 to 5 then the additional output produced from additional implement of the variable input labor is 5. Similarly, if one labor produces 5 quintal of weight and two labor produces 11 quintal of weight, then the additional output that we got from additional implement of the variable input labor is 6 quintal. Mathematically, it is calculated by dividing 11 minus 5 for 2 minus one and this will give you six again if two labor produces 11 quintal and three labor produces 18 quintal the additional output produced from one variable input labor is seven quintal and again if three labors produce 18 quintal and four labor produces 24 quintal then the additional output produced from the additional implement of the variable input labor is 6 quintal that is mathematically calculated by dividing 24 minus 18 for 4 minus 3 which is 6 quintal again if 4 labor produces 24 quintal and 5 labor produces 27 quintal the additional output produced from additional implement of the variable input labor is 3 quintal mathematically it is calculated by dividing 27 minus 24 for 5 minus 4 again if 5 labor produces 27 quintal and 6 labor produces 27 quintal then the additional output produced from additional implement of the variable input labor is zero that means it is calculated by dividing 27 minus 27 for 6 minus 5 in this case there is no additional output produced from additional implement of the variable input labor finally if six labor produces 27 quintal and seven labor produces 25 quintal the additional output produced from additional implement of the variable input labor is negative two quintal that means with additional implement of the variable input labor there is a negative output produced from the given combinations of inputs this is the total product total product is the total output produced from the given variable inputs and the marginal product is the additional output produced from additional implement of the variable inputs labor mathematically we saw the way of calculating the marginal product of the variable input labor based on 
the table that we saw on the farm model. This is the way of calculating the marginal product of the variable input labor. The average product is the total product per unit of the variable input labor produced and mathematically it is calculated by dividing total product for the variable input labor. This is the way of calculating the average product of the variable input labor. Accordingly, the average product of the first labor is 5 quintal. The average product of the second labor is 5.5 quintal. The average product of the third labor is 6 quintal. The average product of the fourth labor is 6 quintal. The average product of the fifth labor is 5.4 quintal. The average product of the seventh labor is 3.5 quintal. Now let's see the graphical representation of production. This is the total product. While you are going to plot the total product curve, just represent all the values of total product in the y-axis and all the values of the variable input labor in the x. And this is total product curve, which is N-shaped curve. Again, in order to plot the average product of the variable input labor, just represent all the values of average products in the y-axis and all the values of the variable input labor in the x. Similarly, in order to plot the marginal product of the variable input labor, just represent all the values of marginal products in the y and all the values of the variable input labor in the x. Now, from this curve, we can point out some relationships between total products and average products, average products and marginal products. First of all, let's see the relationships between the total product of the variable input labor and the marginal product of the variable input labor. Now, starting from this point to this point, the marginal product curve is increasing. That means MEP is increasing means the additional output that we get from additional employment of the variable input labor is increasing. Hence, whenever the marginal product increases, the total product curve is increasing. But the total product curve increases at an increasing rate because the additional output will provide more outputs. So whenever MP increases, TP increases at an increasing rate. This is the first relationship between total products and marginal products. Starting from this point to this point, the marginal product of the variable input labor is declining, but it is positive. Whenever MP decreases but positive, the total product curve is again increasing. The TP is increasing but it increases at a decreasing rate. The total product of the variable input labor will increase at a decreasing rate. This is the second relationship. That is, whenever MP decreases but positive, then TP increases at a decreasing rate. At this point, the total product curve reaches at its maximum, and whenever TP reaches at its maximum, MP is zero. And beyond this point, the total product curve is declining. And whenever TP declines, you are asked to tell something about the patterns of the MEP beyond this point. So whenever TP declines, MEP is negative. So the four relationships between TP and MEP are whenever MEP increases, TP increases at an increasing rate. Whenever MP declines but positive, TP increases at a decreasing rate. Third, whenever TP reaches at its maximum, MP is zero. And finally, whenever TP declines, MP is always negative. Now, let's see the relationships between the average product of the variable input labor and the marginal product of the variable input labor. Starting from this point to this point, the marginal product of the variable input labor is above the average product of the variable input labor. Whenever MP is above AP, then AP increases. This is the first relationship between AP and MP. Whenever 
MP is above AP, AP increases. At this point, the average product of the variable input labor rates at its maximum point. And whenever AP equals to MP, then the AP curve rates at its maximum. And beyond this point, the average product of the variable input labor is above marginal product. And whenever AP is above MP, then AP decreases. So the three relationships between the AP and MP of the variable input labor are whenever MP is above AP, AP increases. Whenever AP equals to MP, AP is at its maximum. And finally, whenever AP is above MP, then AP decreases. Now, let's see the states of production. There are three states of production called the first stage, the second stage, and the third stage. The first stage of production starts from the origin, from the origin to the point where AP equals to the MP curve. The AP curve equals to the MP curve at this point. The second stage starts from the point where AP equals to MP or AP is maximum to the point where MP is zero or TP is maximum. And the third stage is whenever TP declines or MP is negative. In the first stage of production, the marginal product of the variable input labor is always above the average product of the variable input labor. Hence, the firm is advised to employ more variable input because the firm is getting more output from the employment of more variable input. In the third stage of production, the additional output that we get from additional employment of the variable input labor is negative. Hence, the firm is advised to reduce employment of the variable input labor. So, a rational producer is advised to produce in the second stage of production where AP is above MP but the MP is positive. This is about the relationships between TP and MP curves. This is the relationship between the AP and MP curves. And I told you the stage of production. The first stage starts from the origin to the point where AP is equal to MP to the point where AP is maximum. And in the first stage of production, MP is always above AP. The second stage starts from the point where AP equals to MP to the point where MP is equal to zero or TP is maximum. This is a stage where a rational producer is advised to produce. And the third stage of production is whenever TP declines or the marginal product of the variable input labor is negative. Now let's see a law called the law of diminishing marginal returns, LDMR. It states that as we employ successive amount of the variable inputs over a fixed input, then the additional output that we get, additional employment of the variable input will eventually decline. This law, in short, tells us the marginal product of the variable input labor will always decline. But the law starts to operate after the MP curve is at its maximum. For example, if we have two hectares of land, producing weight on two hectares of land by one labor is good. If we employ another labor, it is very good. But if we employ 10,000 labors on two hectares of land, then the additional output that we get from additional employment of the variable input labor will always decline. We will not get good output from the given combination of the inputs. Students, this is all about the first lesson of unit 4. Stay safe, stay home. Thank you.